Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we're going to be making a video on what's in my camera bag 2019 and um, I have I have this bag too but we'll get to that in a second. First of all, don't don't bother the bandana. I was just feeling it. I wanted to see what it looked like, you know. I kind of like it so we're going to keep it like that for today. And second, um, I actually thought this video would be strangely a little bit hard to do because I'm actually using half the equipment to make this video anyway. So let me just get right off the bat. The camera I'm using right now for all the OG fans out there that you guys already watched my videos before, I'm using the Canon EOS T5i. Canon EOS Rebel T5i. That's really what it's called. I missed the Rebel part, sorry. It's a little bit of an older camera. There's like the T6i now. I think I'm not sure if they have the T7i out, but this is a nice camera though. I love it. I've been using it for a couple years now. All right, and now moving into the actual camera gear that I have. I showed you guys this in my last video, my setup video, but I didn't go too far into detail, so that's what we're going to do today. For everyone that actually likes cameras, this video is for you. All right, so first of all, we got my uh, 10 to 18 millimeter wide angle lens that I use for most of my vlogs primarily. This is the reason why I got it. I don't know. It's very nice for like low light situations because of its aperture and everything the wider the frame you know the more light it lets in this does have image stabilization um, built into the lens obviously it's not going to be like some smooth you know GoPro whatever built in stabilization but it's going to definitely help for anyone that's ever wondered why their you know footage isn't so smooth even though your lens already has image stabilizer built into it like I said the image stabilizer really isn't that much I mean it does help but you're gonna have to do some more post-production work. Like I'm talking about and like whatever, you know, software you use, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, you're gonna have to use Warp Stabilizer, Nest, and then Slow Motion if you wanna make it look real smooth. That's just my opinion. All right, next up we got, hold on a second. This is the regular stock lens. And now everyone that has the camera that I have, has a stock lens or they should anyway I'm not sure how they do it anymore but when you buy the camera it actually comes with the lens now this one is an 18 to 55 for this lens the minimum uh, zoom out length or focal length whatever you want to call it is 18 millimeters which is also the maximum length that you get out of the wide angle lens right here this is 18 to 55 this is really good for um, you know just in general going out and going to eat or whatever you want to take a cool picture with your friends this is a good lens for that very you know portable I mean not I'm not gonna say it, it's just portable I just that this is your go-to lens when it comes to just going out and doing whatever you want to do with your friends and hanging out because sometimes with the wide-angle lens sometimes you can't get close enough um, because the uh, maximum focal length or the zoom length is 18 millimeters all right and then the next lens I have this is my zoom lens this is 55 to 250 so the minimal focus length for this is also the maximum for the stock lens sometimes they can get confusing I know um, but whenever you start to use it a lot more you know get the hang of it I also watch a lot of videos on all these lenses I don't just go out there and get them I look up like what lens are best for like starters and cameras and all that you know beginners like me obviously okay I'm not really a beginner with cameras I am but I'm not I've been researching cameras and lenses for three years now but this one I feel is best for uh, outdoor sports photography or indoor really with good lighting the only thing I've ever had a problem with with this lens you know is just the um, what do you call it the motion blur sometimes it can be so zoomed in and the t5i shutter speed isn't exactly perfect so whenever you're taking like like really quick photos there will be some amazing pictures that you get out of it in sport mode when you like more you're taking like you know 10 pictures in five seconds like you just hold it down and go some people are gonna be like what the hell was that I don't know it's just my imitation of a really quick shutter but you will get some very nice photos out of this I love this lens a lot for that I actually use this lens to do my sister's graduation photos for her it's very good to get a blurred background because I mean well first of all you do have to be very very far away from your subject whenever you're shooting with this because like I said it's a zoom lens so you're gonna start off like very zoomed in whenever you look at that and also whenever you're shooting with this camera there's no point there is absolutely no point in using this camera if there is not enough background space because the point of this camera, in my opinion, is one, to actually get a blurred background in two. I guess I don't actually have a number two, so we're just gonna go with the, uh, you know, make sure you have a really cleared out background so you get a big enough depth of field for the camera and the lens itself. And one more thing about this lens is, yes, it is very good for sports photography, but um, it is not the best for videography. Uh, unless it's on manual, it's not very good. What I mean by manual is just, you know, the manual focus. It does have the autofocus and manual focus, you know, option here, like the clicker and then uh, stabilizer on and off. Whenever 
if you are recording with this lens and it's on autofocus, you're going to see a lot of jitters within the actual lens itself because it's trying to, you know, it's trying to focus into its subject. It makes a lot of noises, it makes like a like, you know, it's just trying really hard to focus on the subject. Um, so if you really want a, you know, a nice video, then I'll make sure that's on manual focus and the subject isn't moving a lot. So, you know, it doesn't lose focus, obviously. Next up, we get the Rode microphone. Um, this microphone, I love it. Uh, it's very good whenever you're not around other electronics. I know that might sound weird, but uh, this this mic does have a lot of problems when you're going to like like static areas. Static areas meaning like your my own computer. If I go to uh, you know my fridge, if I get close to anything magnetic, I'm sure you guys have heard it in my video and wondered what that was. Yeah, that's my video mic go. Whenever you go near. Uh, you know, magnetics like things like that. That's just gonna, it's just gonna start crackling on you. I thought I broke the mic at first, but it's just a part of it. If you do want to get rid of that, you're gonna have to upgrade to the video, uh, video mic pro. That mic does not have a plug in and go feature. It, that's, I mean, that's the reason why they call this the video mic go because you can just plug it in, go. There's no battery in it. You just, you know, using the camera's battery to support it. Um, but with the video mic pro, um, you have a built in battery to the actual, you know, the microphone. But this right here is, uh, a lot of people wonder what this thing is. Okay, this is the actual mic itself. This right here is a wind muffler. It's a dead cat windshield. That's what they call it. This helps to block out any other like, you know, extreme like wind blows, obviously, you know, it really helps when you're outside. Um, really helps whenever like, you know, just it's just a lot of wind in general. It really helps block that out. And that's pretty much that guys. Um, I really don't have a ton. I do have a lot, but okay, so I'm using my lighting kit that I have and then I'm using the tripod. Um, I'm very fortunate to actually, um, you know, get these for Christmas and for my birthday. Throughout the years, I've asked for only camera equipment. Like uh, for the for Christmas, I asked for the 50 millimeter lens and my, you know, the camera bag. But if you guys really care about something um, and you guys want more equipment towards that, I suggest just waiting for Christmas, waiting for your birthday and you know put everything invest everything into that because for my birthday what we're moving into next i actually you know invested in a drone this is the dji spark i have not used this drone ever since like july because it is very cold in buffalo and dji like they do not suggest that they use your pro or their products under 30 degree weather here it is you just gotta open it and it's that tiny little thing right there i need to start it up again just to get like you know a good feel for it and you know just fly it again you know all right the camera stopped recording for a second so I gotta get back to where I was talking about. If you guys are gonna get the DJI Spark, I do recommend getting a couple batteries because the flight time is only 13 minutes and that will go back very quickly when you're having fun. I currently have two and one battery will cost $50. I also have the remote. Um, it's actually in the bag right now. Hold on, I can get that out. People wondering how you control it. You can actually either control it with your phone or if you wanna spend the extra money, which is actually what I did, um, you can get the, why is this? Oh crap, I didn't mean to turn it on. This is the remote here, you, you know, you spread these out and then you put your phone under Underneath, and then you can control it with these little analog stick features right here. That's what you use. There's a return to home feature right there. Um, you know, the sport modes. So whenever we turn on sport mode, all your uh, sensors on the drone turn off, and you can go as fast as you want. But I do not suggest that because it's really not safe unless you're very experienced with drones. I'm getting there, but I'm not experienced totally yet. This one costed me about eight hundred dollars. If you don't want the remote with the drone, and you just you can you know control it from your phone, then that'll save you an extra three hundred dollars because the remote is very expensive. Um, you know, it has the GPS in it. It has a lot of built-in features. It helps actually fly and everything. And it has like it, this is really nice. I suggest getting this if you're you know a beginner. All right, but that's pretty much everything that I have. Like I said, I did not me personally. I mean, I did technically buy them, but this is all birthday presents and Christmas gifts from the past five years i care a lot about my passion what i do i'm a filmmaker so i try my best to invest in anything related to that like the next thing i need i don't know like the next thing i actually really want but it's very expensive is the image stabilizer like an actual professional stabilizer not like a ronin those are like freaking movie like you know hollywood type but i want just something that'll keep my camera stable uh, when i'm moving it like for cinematic shots and everything some people might not think i need it but some people might not think i also needed the drone but you know please leave a like on this video and subscribe if you guys are new um if you guys want to see more of this content please be sure to come back to this channel i really do appreciate it i just hit 400 subscribers a couple days ago and i'm really trying to just keep up with my work and everything and you know just keep going in 2019 i'm trying to get a good start to this year so um, like i said leave a like subscribe if you guys are new and i uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day night whenever you're watching this and i'll see you guys in my next video peace out everyone